Welcome to another video. We want to find all triples x, y, z integers that satisfy this system of equations. And if you look closely at the system, it appears that it is exactly the same thing repeated three times just using alternate or alternating variables. So um, we are going to Try to look at this as if it were the same equation behaving as a periodic function. Because it looks like where we started plugging in x is where we ended. So notice how a function of x is y, a function of y is z, and the function of z goes back to x. So it's more like it runs around, goes around three times, and comes back to the starting point. So this is more like a fixed point problem or a periodic point problem. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we're going to do is say, hey, we know all the equations are exactly the same thing. We're just changing the inputs. So let this function, um, let the um, function be f of t. So we know we're going to plug in x at some point, but we have f of t will be t cubed minus 4t squared minus 16t plus 60 equals what? We don't know what it's equal to until we know what we're plugging into it. So, but if you pay attention, when we plug in x, when x is the variable, f of t becomes y. So we can easily say that f of x when x is the variable, the output is y. And when y is the variable, the output is z. And when z is the variable, the output is x. So, instead of putting y here, we can put f of x here in place of y. Right? So you can see that if you start from x and you repeat the process three times, you're going to end up at x again. So we can say clearly f of z, but instead of writing z, we write f of, remember z is f of y, we write f of y, but instead of writing y, we write f of x <laughs> of f of x. How many parentheses do I need? I need one more. Mm -hmm. Equals x. The fact that you start from x, apply the function three times and come back to x means that this is a periodic function or you say x is a periodic point of the function. Therefore, therefore x is a periodic point, point of f. Okay, so how do we find a periodic point? Now, typically, when you start from a point and you come back to that point, we refer to that as a fixed point. Now, but this is not exactly a fixed point because a fixed point just means if you plug it in, you get it immediately. But a periodic point means you plug it in and you do it over some time, it comes back to that point. So what we want to investigate is, firstly, what are the fixed points of this function? And then, with the fixed points, we can tell where the periods are. Remember, if you start, you come back, at least you can see how far you have to go in order to come back to a fixed point. So that's what we want to experiment with. And a good idea for that is always to move everything to one side and get zero on the other side, just like you're solving quadratics. 
Okay, so be a fixed point of f of t. Okay, what does that mean? A fixed point means then f of t is equal to t. That's what we've been talking about. You plug it in, you get it back. So this is a fixed point. Now, the go-to strategy for solving any fixed point problem, whether in real analysis or just simple algebra, is to move this t to one side and have a zero. So we're going to say f of t, the minus t, let's say minus t is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. But let's go back. What did we say f of t was? f of t is this expression. So f of t minus t equals zero would imply that if you subtract t from this side, you will get zero. So that means that f of t minus t will be equal to t cubed minus 4t squared minus 16t, but minus 16t, we will not, because we are subtracting 1t, will be minus 17t plus 60. And we want this to be equal to zero, okay? This will be equal to zero from this equation. So we just want to see, can we factor this? Because if we can factor it, then we get all the numbers that we need using synthetic division and the rational root theorem. Okay, I don't want to write too much. We can write the coefficients. You got 1, negative 4, negative 17, 60, and we're going to try every number that can go in here. Actually, that's easy. So, but let's just stick to the ones that I know are going to work. So we're going to stick to three. So we put three here and we drop this number down. Always drop the number down. You got one. One times three is three. You add, you get negative one. Negative one times three is negative three. You add, you get negative 20. Negative 20 times three is negative 60. So here you got a remainder of zero, which means three is a zero of this polynomial. And clearly, once you know that, the remaining polynomial is, because this was cubic, is going to be t squared minus t minus 20. So we have f of t minus 1 can now be written as, since this is a factor, can be written as x, this is minus t minus 3t, not x, t t minus 3 times, this is going to be t squared minus t minus 20, and that's equal to 0. And we know this can be factored, just simple factoring, um, negative 5 and positive 4. So we can say that this is equal to um, t minus 3. If you factor this, this is t minus 5 and t plus 4 equals 0. And you can solve this because now we can see all the zeros of this, hey, not minus 1, minus t. So we can see all the zeros of this expression here, um, which is basically 3, 5, and negative 4. So f of t minus t equals 0 when t equals negative uh, 4, 3, 5. These are the zeros of this expression. So the fixed point, so no matter how far the function dances, it's going to come back to that number. It's going to become, this is going to be true. What we don't know is whether this guy is periodic or not, maybe it's just a fixed point, and whether there are other numbers. But we know that this is true, these are the fixed points, we're going to investigate these fixed points. So what you want to ask yourself is, is it possible that
If we pick a number that is bigger than 5, because now look at our range. The smallest number is negative 4. The biggest number is 5. Is there a chance that if we pick a number that is greater than 5, this can still come back to 0? Because now we just showed that this is 0. What if? Is it possible that we could get 0 again after we go beyond 5? Or if we go below negative 4, picking integers. Okay, now, if we just make a simple sign chart, we can tell that, look, let's just make a sign chart. If we have negative 4, if we have 3, if we have 5, we just now, why am I doing this? Because I want to eliminate the option or the thought in my head that if I start testing bigger numbers, I might find another fixed point, okay? Or if I start testing smaller numbers, I might find one. If I restrict my range of values to negative 4 to 5, then I can just try all of them because there are not too many numbers. Uh, from negative 4 to 5 is about 10 numbers. Negative 4. And I know that I can test them within the time that I'm given. So, if I test a number that is bigger than 5, can I ever get 0? Can it come back to a fixed point? If it doesn't come back to a fixed point, then it means I don't need to test them. The same thing, if I test a number that is less than negative 5. So, using our critical expressions here, um, let's do it up here. So, my claim is that there are no fixed points if t is greater than 5 or if t is less than negative 4. Remember, fixed point just means that f of t minus t will be 0. Now we want to see, because this is f of t minus t, the product of these three, we want to see if anything will ever give us 0. Obviously, it's not possible. Now look, and it's going to even get worse, because if you pick a number less than, less than negative 4, let's say negative 5, negative 5 minus 3 will be negative, negative 5 minus 5 is negative, negative 5 Oh, one thing is wrong. No, that's correct. Negative 5 plus this is negative. So everything here is negative. The product of three negative numbers is negative. So you will always get a negative number. And just by observation, the number is going to be bigger than the number you plugged in. For example, when we picked negative 5, okay? Look, negative 5 is going to give you here, you get negative 8. Here you're going to get negative 10. Here you're going to get negative 1. That's negative 80 already. But the number you plugged in is negative 5. So what it does is this function forces the number you plugged in to get negative and bigger. So it will never come back to that point. And if you plug it in again, if you plug it in three times, you're going to end up with much bigger numbers. And therefore, this does not help our case. Now let's go test this. We're not testing the middle yet. We just want to test this side. If we test this side, see what's going to happen. You pick a number, let's say 6. You put 6 here, you're going to get 3, which is positive. You put 6 here, you're going to get positive 1, okay? You put 6 here, you're going to get positive 10. So notice that you're still going to get a positive number that is much bigger than 6. So, positive, but far, far greater than 6. So, the chances of you repeating it and coming back down so that what you started with is what you get are not there. So, the conclusion from this observation is that plugging in any number that is greater than 5 or less than negative 4 does not bring you back to where you started, ever. Okay? So... There is no chance of repeated iteration. I don't know if that's a tautology or not. Bringing us back to f of t equals t. We're never going to come back. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So our chances are between these numbers, negative 4 and 5.
So what you can do is you test out these numbers, negative 4, negative 3, all the way to positive 5. If you test out the numbers by repeatedly plugging in the number, you'll find out that the only numbers that work are actually negative 4, 3, and 5. So everything I've been doing since we got these numbers is just to prove that it doesn't matter what else you do, you will not get another answer. Okay, so I've plugged in the first set of numbers. I plugged in negative 4, all these numbers into T, and notice what happened. As soon as I plugged it in, these are the values I got, okay, for the first iteration, f of t. So these are the values of y from the original. So these are all the values of y if you vary all the inputs. Okay. But there's a problem. As soon as I got the answers, this guy still stays within the range that we're investigating. Remember, the range we're investigating is this. Once your answer, your output goes outside like this, the next time I plugged it in, it was in thousands. Okay, remember, any number greater than six is not going to come back. So this is not coming back, 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 not coming back. This guy is coming back. But we know something about this guy. It is this guy. So it's going to be negative four, negative four. But it doesn't work because what we started with was four, not negative four. So it is not coming back. Okay, so this is not one of our solutions, but this guy has stayed in, this, in the cycle. This guy has stayed, and this guy has also stayed. Everybody else, not coming back. I am not coming back. No. So, looking at what we have, the only numbers that actually generate this three-period um, cycle will also be the same numbers that give us the fixed points, which are the numbers that we got right from the beginning. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.